Hello everyone and welcome to the Game Beyond Live. I'm your host Gabe Mack as always and today we're going to be talking about some games and game theory and game design and we're also going to be talking about a couple of other things. We've got some big news to talk about. we got a brand new course that we're about to launch. But first off, what do you think of that little ad we just played? Yeah, we're going to be throwing that ad out there for our game design course. That's our introduction to serious game design. You're going to want to make sure if you're interested in any aspect of game design or gamification or serious game design, this is the introduction, sorry, this is the introduction course you want to take. And we've got some advanced courses coming up in the coming months. But first course that we've got is something special. And I'm really excited to uh, share this news with you. Now, many of you know that I have been basically going around the world, traveling, speaking, um, doing lots of conferences and keynotes and lectures. I mean, everywhere from uh, Munich to Montreal, uh, from uh, Canada to Israel, from uh, uh, Estonia to Spain. Um, this is uh, this is a talk here in Paris. Uh, here we have another talk here that was in uh, Madrid. Uh, let's see, we've got a talk here. This was at Next uh, in uh, Berlin. Um, we have another uh, talk here. I believe this was also. Oh yeah, that was also in Spain. Here we have another uh, talk in uh, somewhere in Germany, I believe. But yes, I've done many, many, many public speaking arrangements, um, keynotes and lectures as a teacher, um, talks. Um, I mean, I've I've turned down more TEDx's probably than many people have been offered. And here's the thing. What a lot of people don't know is that I've also been teaching presentation technique for many years as well at mainly at the colleges and universities that I teach at or sometimes I would do a guest uh, workshop at uh, college or university. And this presentation technique course has up until now never been offered online. It's always been a live interaction course, but I thought it was the perfect way to really get the, the school also launched to give a kind of diverse range of skills and not just game design, but if you have a great idea for a game, um, if you have a great idea that could save the world, uh, then you got to get that idea out. And one of the most important skills in that is presentation technique. How do you present your idea to get people on board with it? Now, this is not just about public speaking, okay? So there's a lot about public speaking. How do you set up a presentation, right? But it's also about battling the fear of public speaking because that is one of the biggest fears. The number one fear in the world is public speaking. And I go through a whole bunch of different uh, sources and routes and exercises to help get over this fear of speaking. So yeah, check, it's launched now. And we've got an early bird special for 20% off, right? For the early birds. That's for the folks that are getting in there first. The new presentation technique, check it out at school.thegamebeyond.com or www.thegamebeyond.com and you'll see my uh, uh, younger uh, uh, beardless uh, self there. Well, I had a little bit of a a little bit of a chin strap there, right? You know, but nothing like, uh, like I do now. So yeah, this was um, not my first public speaking event, but yeah, that was uh, uh, back in the early days, so to say. Sorry, I needed a quick, uh, quick bit of libation there. So yeah, new presentation technique course. It's got all kinds of tips. It's got 
tricks. It's got skills. I even threw in a bunch of uh, games in there that you can play with your friends to try and uh, get public speaking. So it's uh, you save basically 18 bucks, right? So it's it's 80 bucks. It's 20, almost like 20 bucks off. It's like yeah, 70, 80 bucks uh, basically, and it's an hour and a half of about 20 different videos. In fact, let me just go ahead and show you. Nope, wrong one. Ah, here we go. So these are, if you go to the school.thegamebeyond.com, um, you'll, uh, you'll see it actually, but this is the course right here. You see, we have, uh, first it talks about the fear of public speaking. We look at where this this fear of public speaking comes from. Let me uh, turn the screen brush on here. So I'm talking about this one right here. And then we talk about the different fear triggers. What are the different triggers that can get us all nervous, right? All right. And you know, you know the, the the shakes in the nose, the, uh, the shakes in the, the throat, the, uh, uh, the nervous twitches, all that kind of stuff. Then we go through, you know, different exercises for breathing control. These are things that, you know, everything from opera singers, actors, um, a lot of different professionals use these breathing exercises and the breathing techniques. We also talk about some other exercises to help those triggers called it's okay. And we basically look at how do you control these mental fear triggers and be like, okay, it's all going to be fine. Deep breath. We're going to be good. Um, we also, uh, let me just, uh, move that here real quick for you. Uh, boom, boom. We also talk about, you know, planning your talk. You know, what is the, what is the best way to really set up your talk so that you can make sure that people go away with the key points that you want. Um, we, there's a lot of research that's been done in this and we, we look at some of that research into planning the perfect talk, you know, that goes into everything from talks from Martin Luther King to, uh, I have a dream and, and Steve Jobs is, uh, iPhone launch, you know, these are many, many different great talks. And we talk about the secret sauce of giving great talks. These are basically... You know, it's that's just a good, solid 30 minutes, 40 minutes of just tips and tricks and skills to take your presentation from here to there. Right. Look, my hands are, are cut off. It's so crazy big. Yeah. Um, then we're going to uh, also look at, you know, some different kind of presentation design techniques. You know, we look at, you know, what, what kind of graphic design and animation can you add into your course? Um, we also look into, boop, 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 uh, visual aids. These are the different things like storyboards and mood boards that you can use to really help sell your idea or your presentation. Um, we go through everything from what is the second screen, what are you seeing versus what I'm seeing. We look at a bunch of PowerPoint alternatives. If you hate PowerPoint, boy, we've got some great alternatives for you too. Um, go into a whole bunch of pro tips um, and also some secret tips and tricks about how to become a pro speaker. How is it that you go from nobody knowing who you are to being flown around the world to do talks about the subject you love? And of course, you know, because I'm a gamer, I have a whole bunch of training games. Now, these training games have been well play tested over, gosh, I don't know, 10 years or maybe even 15 years now of doing presentation technique course with uh, students. And this is these games alone is something that other teachers have taken away and put into their curriculum because they're they're great games to play with a, a group to really improve your presentation skills and as a teacher please honestly um really the teachers out there you know how sometimes it can be really hard to stay awake during these student presentations let's be honest all right let's be honest now 
give them a couple of these training games, show them a couple of these skills and techniques, and I guarantee that they will improve their presentation skills and you won't be as weary of those evaluation moments, let's just say, okay? So yeah, to, uh, to all my fellow teachers out there, that right there is a gold mine and well worth the price of admission. So it's a brand new course. Get it for the 20% early bird discount while you can. Um, the discount, here you go. Yeah, the, the discount, if you put uh, early bird in your code, okay? Yeah, code promo, go to school.thegamebeyond.com, put in promo code early bird and get your 20% off and really take your presentation technique skills to the next level. Yeah? All right, far out, man. Big launch. It's a big day for me, you know. This is the first time I've ever given this uh, course online, so I'm really curious what people think about it. I know that I've had of so many of the courses that I've given over the years, I know I've had so many students come back to me and tell me how much this course really helped them get success in uh, in their lives, everything from trying to pitch for getting a grant to trying to get an idea across inside of uh, a company, trying to uh, pitch an uh, idea for a new startup to investors, um, or going to a conference and, and showing your, your project, or presenting to uh, a jury uh, for an award uh, of some kind. I mean, so many key moments in the line of success have to do with presentation technique. And here's the thing. If you're like some kind of savant, right? Let's say Rain Man, okay? And you don't have that Tom Cruise slick guy to, you know, be the 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 word for you or the mouth for you, then this is something that you need to try. And Trust me, I've had a lot of uh, students who are on the spectrum that have gone through this course and it really helped them get over that fear. So there's there's a bunch of different things we can do. Take the course and I'd love to have your feedback because I've got a couple of extra bonuses, uh, bonus courses as well, uh, bonus material coming up for it that should really help you get onto the next TED uh, run. Yeah, excellent. Let's see what else we got. Um, oh yeah, one thing that um, I had uh, noticed is let's go here we go is that certain people weren't sure how to use Discord. Yeah. Now, if you go, if you're trying to join along um, along with the, the crew. Um, and you've gone to the gamebeyond.com forward slash live. Now, of course, here you're going to see, hey, uh, join the Discord chat, right? So you click on that and it says, hey, join Discord. What should everyone call you? If you haven't already signed up for Discord, let me just give you a quick introduction to what Discord is. Discord is basically like a messenger chat. Um, it's like your, your Zoom, it's like your uh, Twitter, all rolled up into one, right? It was designed specifically for gamers so that we could play and chat and talk and stream all kind of at the same time. And it has some very interesting unique, unique functions, which is why I'm using it uh, for the back channel for the school. Now, if you haven't uh, signed up, which quite, <laughs> there's 11 members. Um, so yeah, go ahead and uh, make sure you can uh, go and sign up. If you already have an account, it'll just say, okay, um, make uh, make an account for me, log in with QR code, you're good to go. And then you'll be taken to our Discord channel. Now here's Discord. Here you see a whole bunch of, let's just say, 
think of them as uh, uh, Discord channels, okay? It's like a main broadcaster. Like, let's say you're, uh, you're CNN or your RTL or your ABC, right? You know, whatever, whoever you want to follow. Right. And as you can see, that there's a whole bunch of different channels that you can follow at any time. Anyways, um, you can find new ones if you want. You, know, you can explore public servers, find a whole bunch of different communities, for instance, uh, for uh, game development. Here's a whole bunch of uh, game dev networks, right, and communities. And all I have to do is click on it and say, hey, great, yes, welcome, wonderful, hi, nice to see you, hello, wonderful, nice to meet you, and now you're in the channel. Now, if you go back over here, you can navigate. You see how I navigated between those different channels? You can, right over here, let me get the uh, magic brush. So this is where you click on to navigate your channels. Here, you see we have with inside the broadcaster, yeah, the Game Beyond broadcaster, the ABC or CNN, we have different text channels. These are different channels, as you can see, little hashtags of channels that are basically around different topics. So, for instance, here we have a general channel where basically everybody is just chatting, right? We also have a gaming channel for when you want to do like a game with someone, want to share a game. Maybe it's a game you developed. Maybe you see a game jam online, you know, or maybe you want to join together with a game to prototype or develop, whatever. You can find that in the gaming. Here in the live stream, right? That's where we are right now. We're now in the live stream, okay? And let me show you how I can jump in the live stream. Basically, boom, I'm now in the live stream chat here. Hello, everyone. Hello, live stream on Discord, right? And then it goes to everybody. Now, if we want to um, talk and chat, we can actually be click on one of these, for instance, the lobby. And these are voice channels. And so now anybody who's in a, one of the voice channels can come into the lobby, click right here on lobby, jump into the voice channel with me, and we can chat, right? Same thing if we're doing a gaming session. For instance, I often like to play, uh, do a lot of GMVR game over uh, sessions. Um, we'll jump over here into the gaming section. And now everyone here can now hear whoever's inside the channel can actually hear me. Not only can they hear me, but if I turn on my video, hello, now they can see me uh, as well. No one else is here uh, inside the gaming channel yet. So if you guys were to join in, then boom, here we go. Now we, we've got, you know, live streaming uh, that we can chat, we can talk and all that kind of stuff. Furthermore, I can also share my screens. Um, let's, which screen do we want? We want to share this screen. That's right. Um, go live. And so now, <laughs> now I'm not only am I sharing my screen, you're listening to me and I'm going into like the spiral. Oh, and now we've got all kinds of feedback because I hear that somebody's jumped in. Hello, Nolly. You must hear me me twice. You've got looks like you got your speakers on there. And it's creating a feedback loop, right? You know, a feedback loop. There you go. <laughs> Welcome. Yeah, so anyways, for right now, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be jumping out of the the, uh, the gaming room uh, right now. But yeah, come and join us on Mondays um, as we play a little GMVR and go gaming. If you want to, by the way, disconnect, that's the button to press right there to disconnect right down here at the bottom. I hope you saw that. Let me, I'll do that again. I'm going to jump into the gaming right and then whoop, we're going to jump into screen brush here 
This is the button right here to turn it off. This is the button to turn your screen on, to share your screen. This is the button to share your video. And down here is where you can turn your volume, your mic, your all those different settings on. Yeah? So thanks for joining in on the uh, a little tour there, Nolly, <laughs> on uh, on how to use Discord. This was uh, this was especially for you. So there you go. All right, I'm jumping back into the live stream now. Boom. Um, what have we uh, got up next? Let's see. Yes, I've got some interesting news. This is some interesting news. So check this out. Um, where are we here? Here we go. So I came across this post on LinkedIn, which I think quite a lot of you game designers, developers, artists will find interesting. Um, PlayStation Studios, it, Creative Arts is hiring. Yeah, they've got a whole bunch of different positions from visual effects artists, um, senior gameplay animators, um, environmental artists, uh, staff engineers, um, lead technical artists, um, all kinds of stuff. Now, this is one of this is of course a big move playstation has got to do to keep in the game against xbox they got to come out with some great games so i know that uh there's a lot of former students that you know sometimes watch me so i just wanted to give a quick shout out here to those of you alumni um of the different kind of jobs that are possibly available uh, right now going on at PlayStation Studios. And it really reminds me of um, when I remember back in the day, this was years ago, back when the PlayStation 3 was coming out. And we were actually, I was working uh, with uh, Guerrilla Games on developing um, the game Killzone and Killzone 2. And Killzone 2 was going to be launching on the PS3, but you need a couple of years to develop beforehand, but the PS3 wasn't out yet. So you have, okay, so we have to develop for this new game console, but the game console isn't out yet, right? What do you do? Well, basically what you know these game developing companies do is they build an emulator right it's imagine like you know an emulator that you have for the nintendos nowadays that you can just run now that's like a, a lower emulator now you got to try and go the r the way now you got to try and build an emulator for something that isn't on the market yet and isn't like you know a decade old and can basically um uh, you know run off of uh uh run off of a parking meter right no we're, we're talking about when the ps3 came out it was such a massive machine that they had a room with just computers just as a daisy chain just connected around with each other just so they could play test kill zone it was crazy that's when i realized what kind of computing power really is in these consoles nowadays it is absolutely phenomenal so it there's a reason why the playstation 3 when it came out was not allowed to be sold to various countries that were in the uh axis of evil as george bush called it because they could be used to basically shoot off nuclear warheads. Um, now, that's some serious gaming right there. I mean, you basically have, you know, the <laughs> little, this control right here. You know, this this and that, you know, Xbox is, is essentially enough to, to play war games. Remember the 1980 uh, film War Games with Matthew Broderick? I mean, it's, it's crazy, folks, that the power that is in these things so many people have no the, the the power if you could only harness that power for good right right so yeah make sure um uh, to uh, uh check out uh, the game design 
basics course if you haven't already to see how to start harnessing that power of play in fact i'm going to throw a quick commercial up again So there we go. Yeah, another little reminder there of the course that you can already get with. Yeah, I believe there is. Uh, 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 yeah, it's uh, it's uh, it's online. It's it's going. <laughs> it's good. Um, but yeah, I want to jump into a recent post that I did and ask yourself this question. How many of you made New Year's resolutions this year? And of those resolutions, how many of them have you been able to fulfill? Hmm? We just got over Lent. I figured now was as good a time as any to do a reflection for those of you who failed miserably at everything from Lent to New Year's resolutions. Why is it not working? How come I can't seem to do it? Why don't I have a backbone? No, we got you covered. We've got the solution and the solution is in game design, right? Here's uh, if you haven't read the article, you can read it here, but I'm going to go ahead and tell you the three key points of why you're not able to keep those new year res new year's resolutions. All right. Now let's go through a couple of classic resolutions or goals that people make. Um, we want to lose weight, right? Uh, earn more, spend less, uh, maybe travel more, right? These are the typical New Year's resolutions that people make. And all of these are doomed to fail. Does that do? No, no. I thought that was the way to make the thing go on and off. Oh, maybe it did. But it also made it go out of full screen, too. No, it didn't. <laughs> it didn't work at all. <laughs> all right. Sorry. It's a new uh, little little uh, tool trip I'm trying out here. So anyways, what you need for a good goal is three factors. Number one, you need a measurable outcome. Number two, you need a set amount of time. And number three you need an artificial tra artificial challenge. Yeah? Now, let's look at these three steps and defining a good goal. Step one, defining a measurable outcome right here. Yeah? So, when we want to achieve a goal, we have to define something we can measure to know when we've achieved that goal. Right? If you just say lose weight, what is it? Is it lose one pound or is it 30 pounds? How much weight do you want to lose? So this is, you know, number one step, make it measurable, make it something you can measure. measure. So for instance, um, I want to lose 20 pounds or I want to lose $1,000 more or I want to save $1,000 or I want to visit three national parks. See how those goals have now shifted to something that we can measure. Now we have something that we can go to. Now we have something that we can form and play to plan on. And the second part we need is we need a set amount of time, okay? How long do we have to achieve these goals? Do I have to lose 20, 20 pounds over 20 years or 20 weeks or 20 days? Yeah? Without a deadline, there is no goal. It stays a dream. Yeah. So this is why we need a deadline. So then instead of, for instance, lose, you know, five pounds or 20 pounds. Now what we can do is we can plan a course of action. 
If I have to lose 20 pounds in, for instance, five months, well, now I know I need to lose four pounds a month, right? Makes it a lot more manageable. Now I can figure out a scheme and plan some kind of exercise regimen or diet that could help me achieve that goal. Now, this is something that is um, so crucial um, in setting a deadline to those projects, those dream projects you have. Yeah. I know it's, it's one of those things you're kind of like, especially with like an art project as well. You're like, Oh, I want to be able to take my time and make it, make it perfect. But no, it's not going to work. You need a deadline of like some, uh, art exhibition that you got to get to. You need a deadline of s events are great. It's like, you know, birthdays are a good one. Um, uh, f for instance, you know, I got to do this before my birthday. That's a really great deadline to give yourself. Yeah. Um, these two points are basically the key points that most people in business school and success strategy always learn. So, all right. For those of you who are sitting back going, okay, Gabe, yeah, yeah, yeah. Big, big deal. All right. I got it. We, 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 we learned this at Harvard. Yeah. We, we learned this at, uh, business for dummies, right? What else you got? Ah, but they haven't taught you the third final and most important element to making goals. And that is the artificial conflict. Artificial conflict. What are you talking about? I'll tell you what I'm talking about. The artificial conflict or artificial challenge, this is also, I commonly call it, right? Is what is the extra factor that you're putting into play to make it more difficult? Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You wanna make it more difficult? Oh yeah, we wanna make it more difficult. You see, if we give, this is something typical that most teachers will know when you give an assignment to students, right? And it's a completely open assignment, do whatever you want. <sighs> Lost in the crowd. Don't know what to do, right? Don't know where to begin. Don't know where to end. Don't know where to start in the middle, what have you. However, if you just say, all right, the theme is butterflies. Now you're off, you know, there's kids collecting butterflies, there's kids making butterfly costumes, there's, there's kids uh, making, uh, making airplanes out of butter that fly, right? <laughs> Look at all the creativity that has now been expounded upon because you created that challenge. Just like in games, for instance, Let's take the game of football or for my North American counterparts, soccer. In this game, we see the first two parts of a goal. Number one, the measurable outcome is how many times did the ball go into the goal? How many points were scored, right? The second part of the, uh, the deadline, well, you got two halves, right? 90 minutes together, that's it. 90 minutes. Maybe you get some overtime, right? Set deadline. A game doesn't go on for days. Hey, even the games that do go on for days, like cricket, don't go on forever. There's a set amount of time, deadline. And the third artificial challenge in the game of football, soccer for my North American counterparts, is that you can't use your hands, right? So now... The creativity of how to juggle on knees, how to do bicycle kicks over backwards, how to, you know, bounce on the head. All these new creative solutions have come out because there was this artificial challenge of not being able to use your hands. If you can apply that same design theory to your goals, you can achieve some miraculous things. So for instance, let's look at 
the goals that we have. Let's lose to, let's lose 20 pounds in five months. Let me actually zoom in here. Let's lose 20 pounds in five months, but the artificial challenge is without going on a diet, right? We want to earn a thousand dollars more a month, but not from doing any labor. We want to save $1,000 before the summer, measurable outcome, right? Deadline. And we want to donate 1000 to charity. Basically, we got to make 2000 right? We want to visit three national parks this year, artificial challenge, on a horseback, <laughs> right? Why not? Okay, think of that thing that you could do that could really create that artificial challenge. Now, a tip for creating these artificial challenges is that if you find yourself being blocked, let's say, you know, losing weight, oh, I got to go on a diet again. I hate going on a diet. Use that as your artificial challenge. All right, lose the weight, but this time you're not going on a diet, right? Um, you basically remove that frog, as they say, eat your frog, out of the equation. And now you're going, your brain is going to start thinking of other creative solutions to fix that problem or challenge. So that's an internal thing. When we look internal, what are those things that are blocking us from achieving that goal? Create that as an artificial challenge. So you go around it completely. Shut your brain off from even contemplating it. The other way to go about an artificial challenge is by creating some kind of outside conflict, right? That's an internal conflict. Now let's talk about an outside conflict. The outside conflict, um, like for instance, uh, uh, in... Uh, in uh, challenge in uh, soccer is also you got the other team you have to deal with. And they're trying to, to stop you. Now, one way to achieve the same thing is by making a bet with friends. Make a bet with your friends that you really do not want to lose the bet for. Because it may be a humiliating bet. Don't don't do anything that'll kill you. Just do something that'll that is fun and humiliating enough. Something that is more awful than actually achieving that goal and what you have to go through. So, for instance, you can bet your friends like, I bet I will lose 20 pounds in five months, or I'll clean your house, or I'll bet I'll visit three national parks this year on horseback, or I'll shave off all my hair, right? You know. These are just some examples of what you can do to create an outside conflict or an outside artificial challenge. Now, for those of you who are still not convinced, you're still not convinced of this, you, you're like, yeah, I'm not sure. That doesn't sound very, uh, uh, doesn't sound like a lot to me. Well, this is exactly how JFK started the space race. Yeah, I mean, it's called the space race. If that's not a name for a video game, I don't know. OK, so let's just listen to how JFK started this whole thing. Space is open to us now. And our eagerness to share its meaning is not governed by the efforts of others. We go into space. Because whatever mankind must undertake, free men must fully share. I therefore ask the Congress, above and beyond the increases I have earlier requested for space activities, to provide the funds which are needed to meet the following national goals. First, I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the Earth. No single space project in this period will be more impressive to mankind or more important for the long-range exploration of space, and none will be so difficult or expensive to accomplish. 
we propose to accelerate the development of the appropriate lunar spacecraft. We propose to develop alternate liquid and solid fuel boosters, much larger than any now being developed, until certain which is superior. We propose additional funds for other engine development and for unmanned exploration, explorations which are particularly important for one purpose which this nation will never overlook, the survival of the man who first makes this daring flight. But in a very real sense, it will not be one man going to the moon. If we make this judgment affirmatively, it will be an entire nation, for all of us must work to put him there. There we go. Now you can hear me. So let's just look at what JFK said here. Now, remember, the space race, sending a man to the moon. Hello, buggy. Sending a man to the moon was an incredible challenge at the time. And whether or not it was actually achieved, depending on what conspiracy theory you may believe or not, the fact of the matter is that an enormous amount of the technology that was developed and that came out of this event is something that touches our lives every single day in all aspects of our life, from banking and economics to hearts, uh, uh, to healthcare, to, you know, society and culture i mean everything from you know star trek to you know star wars to heart valves and you know gps coordination this all came from this space race yeah and this space race was a game that was played by two major nations Russia and America. And let's just look again at how John F. Kennedy launched this whole thing. Number one, he says, I believe this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal. Yeah, so he's going to state the goal. Number one, before this decade is out. There he gives the deadline. Before this decade is out. Now, this only gave him less than nine years. Because it was in 1961 when he said this, yeah, before this decade is out. There's your deadline. Before it hits 1970. Of landing a man on the moon and safely returning him to Earth. All right, now this is something we can measure. Yeah, we send him to the moon. They put down a mirror. We can shoot lasers back and forth at the moon, and then they fly back and land safely on the planet. Now we, we can measure this. Yeah, this is something we can measure. And finally, so here we have, number one, the deadline before the decade is out. And number two, we have a measurable, uh, a measurable outcome, right? And so now number three, we have the artificial conflict, which isn't, the amount of budget and stuff that was taken for it. No, 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 no. It was they have to beat the Soviets. Because at this time, you know, the Soviets had already launched some major rockets in Sputnik. And America believed that if they lost this race, they could lose space completely to the Soviets. At least... That's what JFK says here, recognizing the head start obtained by the Soviets with their large rocket engines, which gives them many months of lead time. <coughs> Excuse me. And recognizing the likelihood that they will exploit this lead for some time to come is still more impressive successes. We, never we nevertheless are required to make new efforts on our own. For while we cannot guarantee that we shall one day be first, we can guarantee that any failure to make this effort will make us last. So there we see the three 
steps in action, right? So that was a little example introduction of how you can use game theory to help design better goals. Now you can use this in your personal life, in your business life, uh, whatever goal that you want to achieve. Check out those three points. The first two are pretty easy. The third one may involve a little bit of uh, self-discovery or thinking about it. Yeah. All right. So, wow. Um, that's, uh, that's about all, uh, I think. Let me just double check. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's going to pretty much wrap it up for me today. Make sure you subscribe and join our Facebook group um, and our Discord group because we've got some uh, uh, early bird specials coming out, right? So grab that early bird special for the presentation technique uh, course. And we got, of course, more uh, courses coming up, so you'll want to make sure to subscribe and uh, be on the notification for those early bird deals. And um, yeah, and we've got um, some. I'm working on, of course, you know, more courses uh, that are in the in the mix. But I've also got a couple of events. Oh, uh, Nolly says he wants to travel to Australia. Well, there you go. You can uh, maybe make yourself a plan for that. Um, I guess the uh, one way you could do it is virtually. You could go on Google Maps right now and, and walk through Australia, right? Um, anyways, um, check out our courses at uh, school.thegamebeyond.com. Um, I've been Gabe Mack, and I hope you guys have enjoyed this uh, little bonus session. And I'll uh, hopefully see you next week. Where's my thanks for watching? Ah, here it is.